Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are doing another precursor to the dark web. This is gonna be about the Gold Goblin and kind of his creation. We're gonna cover the Gold Goblin issue number one in this episode, and also Amazing Spider-Man issues nine through 13 by Zeb Wells. Uh, and so we're gonna get started right now because there's a lot to cover. We got Wolverine stuff. We got Judgment crossover stuff with the Avengers, X-Men and Eternals. And then we got, uh, you know, the Hobgoblin returning and, and we have a new version or new versions, I guess, of the Hobgoblin. So really cool. I'm not going to get into a couple major spoilers towards the end. I'll save them for, you know, uh, future videos when we get into Dark Web. But just to give you a broad strokes of what happens in these books as we count down to Dark Web, which, yes, there are many Dark Web books that are out right now, and I have them all. I think there's like six parts to the story that have already been released, plus a Amazing Spider-Man issue 14, which we will talk about in a future episode because it's four short stories. So we'll do that in its own episode, and then we'll get right into Dark Web. Uh, and then also I'm going to do a background on Ben Riley, and we're going to cover his resurrection all the way up to um, you know his solo series that he did with Peter David, and then into where he is currently as uh, you know after he did Spider-Man Beyond. We're going to try to cover that whole mess there uh, for sure. So we had another Ben Riley and Kane origin video that I'm going to make next season, and then we'll do one more, like I said, precursor to Dark Web, which will cover Ben Riley from his resurrection all the way up to him becoming Chasm, the new villain Chasm, and we'll get all that done, and then we'll dive into Dark Web. So it'll probably be like late January, but once we do, I'll start pumping out episodes probably daily of Dark Web to lead us all the way up to you know where we are when we start February with Dark Web. So yeah, a lot of content coming for sure. We're gonna hit the ground running with season six, definitely. Uh, but for season five, to wrap it up, because we have one more episode after this, and I'll hit you guys with that episode in a couple of days probably. For this one though, Let's talk about what Zeb Wells is doing. First, he has this issue where Spider-Man goes to the Hellfire Gala event and he's meeting a bunch of people. He's there undercover because Mary Jane has been kidnapped, apparently. She's, uh, you know, uh, Moira McDaggart has downloaded herself to this collar that Mary Jane is wearing at the event and Moira is trying to get details on the event because uh, Mary Jane's aunt does something with pharmaceuticals. As we learned in Amazing Spider-Man, she was trying to get some drugs tested by Norman to make sure they worked. They were from Kokoa. And that's where her aunt, you know, is, is you know, working, I guess, and, and ha, you know, has a background in pharmaceuticals now or whatever. So Mary Jane is there modeling off some clothes and Moira McDagger gets her hands on her. So Spider-Man shows up, uh, you know, to kind of walk around the party and act like he doesn't notice. But him, Wolverine, Jean Grey, Cyclops, Storm, they all come up with a plan to try to get, uh, you know, Moira's collar off of Mary Jane and save Mary Jane and use this as the one opportunity, hopefully, to destroy Moira McDaggart. And what's neat about this, though, is that Wolverine, you know, Wolverine is, like, walking around this party with Spider-Man, and Spider-Man's meeting different people, and, you know, they're just not, you know, they don't gel well together. You know, Spider-Man's very irritating to Wolverine on a lot of levels. But what was uh, kind of fun was that Spider-Man was meeting characters like Mr. Sinister, and Mr. Sinister's like, hey, where do those, do those webs come out of your, you know, and he's like, no, 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 they come out of my hands. And Sinister's like, do you want them to come out of your... And he's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, so I kind of I kind of liked having those moments where he's meeting different characters from the X-Men universe and they're kind of, you know, playing off his abilities and they're showing interest in what he can do and stuff. And Mr. Sinister being a total weirdo like he normally is. So I kind of dug that whole issue. But eventually they do save Mary Jane and they stop Moira McDagger. But they don't destroy her for good like they wanted to, but they at least save Mary Jane. And her and Peter have a moment there and you find out that... Whatever Peter did, he did it to try to save, he said, a woman he loved, and it, it caused something to happen. So, uh, And now Mary Jane has taken on this responsibility to be with this guy, Paul, and these kids who call her mommy. So I really am like, what is this? Like, what is happening? What what could possibly be happening, you know, to, to Mary Jane and Peter in their relationship? What did Peter do all those months ago? Although I still don't like the overall concept that his life got messed up because of it, especially when his life was going in a, a good direction. And I would have rather seen them work on that good direction for a while before it turned bad again. But that's Marvel. They always bring Spider-Man right back to in the middle of trouble and, and, and get rid of some of that development they started working on for him. So I, I hope you know they, they reverse that at some point. But in the meantime, Peter has kind of moved on from Mary Jane on some level. He still misses her, obviously, and he still thinks about Gwen, because we're going to talk about that coming up in the next issue. But he's also dating Black Cat. Uh, that's a, the new development in this, is that he's given it a real shot. And he actually pulls her aside and, and asks her on a proper date. And I was like, you know what? Good for you, Peter. It's showing that he's, he's trying to mature, he's trying to move on. But he's also trying not to just have a fling with Felicia like they've done in the past. He's trying to make it legit. And she's like, 
eh, maybe. And he's like, maybe. And she's like, well, probably. But I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you sweat a little bit, you know. And she's like, have a good night. And, you know, she leaves and stuff. So, I, you know, I, things are moving in a positive direction for him. But I just wish all that work that they did to bring him back to Mary Jane. And now it's all done. It's kind of like, ugh. Not, you know. I, but in the end, I really just like seeing Peter happy. And, but him trying something new and actually asking Felicia on a date, I thought was kind of neat. I'm like, yeah, it's probably not going to last with them. But it's neat at least for sure, um, you know, to see him take different steps. But, uh, but he does in the next issue, uh, they do a whole um, judgment tie-in issue. The Avengers and X-Men and Eternals at this point had a big crossover event that I did not follow at all. But apparently Celestials showed up and judged each person on Earth. And for 24 hours, each person on Earth would see a, someone that they knew, like a ghost of someone, which was really a celestial projection from the person's mind. And it was just, but it was also like kind of judging them to see if they were worthy to live, I guess. And so... Obviously, Peter Parker has been picked, as as well as everyone on Earth has been picked. So he's walking around seeing a Gwen Stacy ghost, um, and so uh, so he's trying his best to um, you know to get through his day and and do things for people. When people are like, "Hey, you keep blowing me off," like his roommate Randy's like, "You keep blowing me off. I'm supposed to get fitted for my tux." And Spider Man's like, "Dude, Celestials are here to judge us. We could die." And he's like, "Well, or the Avengers could stop it again, and I have to a wedding to attend to in like a week, so." Maybe just help me with the, the tuxedo. So Peter's like, you know what? I will. I have been blowing him off. Let's try to do the right thing. And so that's the whole book. The whole issue is Peter just going like, you know what? I have been letting people down. Let's try to rebuild some of these bridges, you know, um, because I may not, no one may be around tomorrow. And I kind of like that. I just wish it didn't take a celestial to come down to do that to Peter. I wish he would have just naturally come up with that. But he's not doing anything in this book that's out of character. He's just like, all right, I would have eventually come around to help this person, but I better do it now, you know? And it's like, yeah, but that's how you should be. You're Spider-Man. You should always be like that. You should always be very selfless and put other people first. That's how you're, that's, that's why your relationships don't work. So when you are selfish and your relationships aren't working, I'm kind of like dumbfounded of how this, you know, how your story is going. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't feel like a Spider-Man story on some level. So him being selfless in this issue was neat because every time he was, the ghost would become more whole. They would look less celestial and become more like Gwen. And finally it gets to the point where Spider-Man does all these good deeds. He, he forgives a lot of people, J. Jonah Jameson, you know, Norman Osborn, all these people, but then he snaps at somebody. And, uh, and then his, the Gwen Stacy ghost kind of disappears. And so he chases her down. And he says, look, I know you're not the real Gwen. You're kind of a projection from my mind from a celestial but just know that it's hard and I can't always be, I can't always make the right decisions and, and it's it's hard. And he goes, but there's not a day that doesn't go by that I still don't think about you and that I love you and what, what our life would have been like if Norman Osborn hadn't thrown you off that bridge. You know, he's like, I, I still feel responsible to this day for that and, uh, and that's never going to change. And so she kind of, as a celestial, just kind of goes, I've seen your heart, Peter Parker, and you are worthy. Um... So don't fear whatever judgment the Celestials bring, which eventually, I guess, didn't happen. I guess the Celestials were stopped by the Avengers, uh, so it didn't really matter in the long run. But like I said, I just wish they did these things, you know, without Gwen there, because I think that would have made a much stronger, more organic Spider-Man issue than doing it with this crossover. But whatever, they used the crossover to tell this story, you know, fine, whatever. Um, but then that ghost ends up being behind Norman Osborn at the end of the book, and you're like, wait a minute, how? so Norman is seeing Gwen too, uh, as as someone from his past that gets a mistake, but we never find out what happens from that, not completely until Go uh, Gold Goblin number one, which we'll talk about after we talk about the return of Hobgoblin in issues 11, 12, and 13, because we have Robert Kingsley come back as Hobgoblin. At first, you don't know which Hobgoblin comes back, so we're going to get into some spoilers. I haven't given away the full spoiler yet, but uh, you have Robert Kingsley as, as one who shows up, and Norman is trying to crack a deal with him, but really he's trying to get close to him to see if he's the new Hobgoblin. And then a hobgoblin shows up and attacks Norman and Kingsley. So then it rules Kingsley out. So you're like, okay, so it's not Robert Kingsley. Who could it be? And then Ned Leeds has recently returned to comic books and is dating Betty Brant uh, and with her again. And I think she has her kid. So there's that drama going on. And so Peter is kind of uh, touching base with Betty, seeing how she's doing with Ned back. And she's like, yeah, Ned's knee deep in a story right now. And something bad, I think, is happening to him. So Spider-Man investigates and that leads him into, uh, you know, fighting against Hobgoblin. 
but not just one hobgoblin. <laughs> That's kind of one of the twists in it. So who are the two hobgoblins in this story? Well, they do reveal that at the end and the person who's working with them or puppeteering them in a way. So I won't spoil that for you, I would say, because it's still a fresh book. So go check that out. And I don't think that's going to have much bearing on the dark web story. So I would just say, go check it out for yourself. Read it if you'd like. Um, but I've, I'm actually growing to like this run more by Zeb Wells, which is good because I love Zeb Wells' writing. But it's been rocky, that first arc. And I, ultimately, I don't like the concept of Peter screwing something up and, and resetting his Mary Jane relationship. But I will say in the wake of that, Zeb is still doing semi-interesting stuff to where I'm like, okay, there's enough in here where I'm curious to see where it goes. I, I may not be in love with it, but I'm curious to see where it goes. But this whole story arc with the Hobgoblin, as a Hobgoblin fan, I kind of dug this. And, and then bringing in multiple Hobgoblins and then also another reveal at the end I thought was pretty cool. Um, but then Norman shows up to help Peter against these goblins. And you have Spider-Man on a glider, Norman on a glider, these two Hobgoblins on gliders. And it's a sky miracle of be pumpkin bombs exploding and stuff and web shooting. It's it's very fun that those issues um, and at least in the battle from the battle scenes they were a lot of fun. So uh, so then that, that kind of brings us to the creation of Gold Goblin because Norman in this run is you know working with Peter. He hired Peter to work for him at Oscorp, and he's been building a suit for himself um, as the not the gold. He doesn't intend to call himself the Gold Goblin obviously, but he's just building a suit and he plans to make more. And I think. Uh, find people to wear them but what ends up happening is Peter gets you know in, he's in danger when these two hobgoblins are beating him and Norman has to go rescue him and he didn't rescue him in the last storyline if you remember he left Peter to fend for himself so this time he wants to do better and he goes out and uh, and puts on that suit that he made puts on the glider and goes and attacks uh, the goblins and stops them along with Peter and gets photographed and then eventually his identity gets revealed and everyone calls him Norman Osborn, the Gold Goblin. And that's where issue one of this takes place. So that's all the precursor stuff with Spider-Man leading up to Dark Web. So we'll get into Amazing Spider-Man 14, which is another precursor, but we'll, we'll call that Dark Web Part 1. And then we'll get into the actual Dark Web comic and all the other tie-ins moving forward next season uh, for sure. But for here, we're going to end this episode talking about Gold Goblin number one, which I thought was awesome. Um, Christopher Cantwell, who writes this, he wrote the Doctor Doom solo series that I loved a ton. And I think he's also writing Namor. He's really good at writing villains where he's trying to give them some level of sympathy or empathy for them. Um, he's really good at doing it. Uh, I love that Doctor Doom book so much. So him coming on board to write the new Norman Osborn Gold Goblin makes a lot of sense. He's probably the perfect guy to hire for this job. And that's what he does. He's actually walking around. We see him seeing the Gwen Stacy ghost. But he reveals this is not what the... He's like, I saw a vision during the celestial stuff, and it was not this. So this Gwen Stacy ghost that's following him around is different. It's part of his psyche. And the whole book, as he's explaining, he's trying to do nice things. He takes Normie to baseball practice, and Normie's like, you know, hitting it out there. And he's like, no, you got to calculate how to hit the ball, and that, that'll make you win. And Normie's like, I just want to have fun. He's like, you know what? You're right. You need to have fun. You're a kid. Just have fun. Um, so the fact that Norman is trying to do better, he's narrating. He's like, yeah, you know, since Sin, Sin Eater took my sins away almost a year ago now. So it gives you a timeline of when everything's been happening. And he's like, but now I need to try to do better. And everything's going wrong for him. He sees, he gets ice cream. It's green ice cream. Uh, you know, he brings it to Normie and Normie's hitting the balls and he keeps hearing every time the bat hits the ball, he keeps hearing Gwen Stacy's neck snap. And so he's like really struggling. And he's like, you know, I, I remember the time I made Flash Thompson drunk and crash a car um, and crash his truck and stuff and, and it made him paralyzed. He's like, I've done horrible things. I've, I've killed relatives of Peter Parker, you know, attempted to kill relatives of Peter Parker. I tried to kill Mary Jane. I tried to kill all these people. Um, some of them I was successful, some I haven't been. Um, tried to kill Spider-Man. He has all these memories and he's, they're eating them away. And he says, there's a hole inside of me and it's widening. It's, it's getting bigger. And he goes, and I'm afraid that whatever the Sin Eater did will wear off at some point. And he's like, so I keep trying to do the opposite of what my gut is telling me to do and do the right thing. But as he's doing it, he has been outed now as the Gold Goblin. I guess during his battle with the Hobgoblins, his identity got revealed. And so now the newspaper is calling him Norman Osborn, the Gold Goblin. And he's like, why Goblin? I, I'm not even dressed like a Goblin. I look more like, he looks more like Prodigy uh, from the Slingers a little bit with the gold and stuff. So he's just like, yeah, I'm not a goblin. Why are they calling me that? Um, but there is a cool shot of him when he's talking about punching 
the hobgoblins how good it felt. He sees the hobgoblins reflection in his mask. And he's like, it felt good hitting the hobgoblins because it made me feel like I was defeating the formal version of myself. I was hitting myself basically. Um, so again, yeah, Cantwell writes a really good Norman Osborn. He, he's really good at characters like this. Um, and there's also um, a list back here of people that I think Norman Osborn is trying to make amends with. And so obviously he has Peter Parker on there uh, twice, <laughs> I think. Um, but he's got Andreas Strucker, uh, who is the swordsman from his Thunderbolts run. Um, Harry Osborn, Flash Thompson, Carly Cooper. Um, he's got a lot of people on here that you're like, oh, wow. This, you know, they, again, Cantwell did his research like he always does, I feel. And does really, puts little cool Easter eggs in there. So yeah, Lyle Crane and stuff. Like there's a lot of cool little names on that board there. Um, but what ends up happening is... Norman sets up a deal. He's, he's looking for other bad guys out there, especially goblins. And he finds Jack-O-Lantern, who he calls a low-rent goblin. And he says, all right, like I, I see he's selling dead bodies. Like he's finding skeletons and selling them on the black market to creeps and weirdos. And also like, you know, even the museum sometimes and stuff. And he's blackmailing people. And so I'm going to go stop him. So that's when he shows up to fight the Jack-O-Lantern. And they get into a big battle. And Norman releases some nanobots on the Jack-O-Lantern. And they tap into the, the glider that Jack Lantern's on. He's like, see, you're using my old stuff. He's like, I don't know who you are under that mask. Uh, but so this must be the same, you know, one that fought. Uh, maybe not the same, because it's not Jason McIndale. He says it's not Jason McIndale. But maybe it's the same one that fought Venom and Venom number one. But Or, or did that one die? And then there was also a Jack Lantern in the War of Realms who I think died. And then someone else took on the mantle after that, I think. So who knows? I think at this point, Jack Lantern's just, they don't even say who the identity is anymore. Um but Norman Osborn does, you know, cause the glider to stop and the jack-o'-lantern falls, cracks his skull on the ground. The Some gas pipe, you know, from the helmet that makes it look fiery breaks and then the helmet explodes and it destroys and burns most of his face, I guess. And so Norman's like, whoever you are, you're no goblin. You know, you're just a low-rent punk who tried to steal from me and now, you know, and stole dead bodies and sold them to creep. So now you're going to jail. And then all these kids show up and go, oh my God, you're Norman Osborn, the gold goblin. Can you autograph anything for me? And he ends up autographing one of the skulls. Uh, and then all the ghosts of people that he's wronged are showing up and, you know, he's kind of seeing them in his head as, you know, hoping that even though that guilt is still there, that hopefully he's doing the right thing, even though he signed a skull, <laughs> which is interesting. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I just, you know, this run so far and leading up to Dark Web has been Interesting to say the least, you know, I know I use that word a lot, but I actually have been interested in this. Like the the, the arc of Norman Osborn, that was the one thing in, in Nick Spencer's run that I was like, I can't wait to see where they go with Norman Osborn. Because with him being flipped, essentially, kind of like how they did with Axis, where the, the some of the heroes turned bad and some of the villains turned good. I found some of that stuff really neat. I loved what they did with Sabretooth during that run. That Carnage book was a lot of fun where he was going around trying to save people. So having Norman like this is neat, but having it be a struggle makes a lot of sense. And, uh, and I'm curious to see what side he'll come out on. Will he actually find a way to redeem himself? You know, and I honestly hope this is the last story they tell with Norman Osborn. I think he's a, a neat character and he's definitely a mainstay for Spider-Man, but I, I, to me, he's not like the Joker on that level where he has to be around all the time. I don't even think the Joker has to stay around all the time. I think you can kill these characters and make them gone for good, I feel. Um, and I know some people would disagree with that, but I feel like you can. I think, uh, uh, you know, they did it to Norman once, they killed him, and they just brought in other Green Goblins, and it still worked. It was Harry, and then they did, you know, Philip Urich, and they they did it before, and it, it worked just fine, you know. So to me, they've done everything with Norman. They've made him, you know, essentially president, like Lex Luthor. They made him, you know, head of Avengers, at Dark Avengers. Uh, he's been, you know, been, you know, loved by the public, hated by the public, you know, mistrusted by the public, trusted by the public, everything. He's been all over the place. And now he's at a point where Peter's even starting to trust him. So this would be a good final story for Norman. So I hope they write him to the best of their abilities. And then maybe one day, a year or two from now, or whenever they want to wrap up this story, they, you know, he dies heroically because that would be very different, a uh, very different take on, on his, you know, him leaving and him leaving on a positive note as opposed to him dying as a bad guy. And then you just keep him dead, man. Keep him dead for years. You want to do clones of him or something at some point with Jackal? Fine, but just keep the original one gone after this. Because I think at this point you've told pretty much every story you can with the guy <laughs> for the most part, except making him Spider-Man. Uh, but I think even that they tried once or twice in just like cam like little brief appearances. But, uh, but this run, um, 
I'm locked in for now. I'm going to stick on board with Zeb Wells as Spider-Man um, probably after Dark Web a little bit, but we'll see what Dark Web does because they're doing, they're bringing back Ben and that whole arc with Ben where he becomes Chasm and beyond. I liked it at the beginning, but once they turn him into a villain at the end, I'm like, God, I don't like this, but there is still a good guy in Ben because right now I think his memories by the Beyond Corporation have just been massively jumbled and, and ruined and I think once he gets a grasp of those again, he'll hopefully turn to the heroic guy that we know him to be. And that's what I really hope happens to him because I don't want him to be a Spider-Man villain. I don't want Ben Riley to be Chasm. I like him as Scarlet Spider. I like Kane as Scarlet Spider. I like those characters and I want to see more of them. And I hope they do them justice in Dark Web. And I hope Kane shows up in Dark Web because, you know, how are you going to have a Ben Riley story without Kane there to try to stop him? Um, so... Yeah, we'll see where, where Dark Web goes. But we have six issues here. I already have, um, let's see, I got the Venom issues we already talked about, the two Venom issues we already did a video on. But I have Dark Web number one. I, I showed Amazing Spider-Man 14 earlier. I have Dark Web X-Men number one. I got Amazing Spider-Man 15. Um, and I got Dark Web Miss Marvel. And Dark Web Gold Goblin number two. And Dark Web Mary Jane and Black Cat. So these are all the issues that are out now. And in those videos, if they have digital codes in those comics, I will give them out with the comic books and actually boom there's the gold goblin number one digital copy so uh if you want to check out that book you can just put in that code at that website first person who gets it gets the code um but then every review we do next season of these dark web books if you see dark web on it um chances are i will give out a digital code of the comic so make sure you're subscribed and have notifications on so you don't miss out on your chance of getting some free comic books so that's it for me on this one i'm i'm Intrigued to see where it goes. Dark Web, I'm a little worried about because I read some of the precursor stuff and I'm like, eh. And I've read issue one already too. And I'm like, eh, we'll, we'll see. But we'll get, I'll give you my full thoughts on those next season with Venom Vlog season six. Um, but for now, let me know your comments of Amazing Spider-Man down below, whether you're liking the run, hating the run. If any of this intrigued you, let me know your thoughts down below and we'll keep talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. One more episode to go to episode 750 and rounding out and ending season five of Venom Vlog. Thank you all so much for being on this journey with me. Happy holidays. I don't know when this will go up. Hopefully, you know, soon after Christmas, but Merry Christmas to you if you celebrate Christmas. Um, you know, Happy Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, you know, uh, Happy New Year, whatever it is, all of it, you know, too, as well. You know, just just know that I'm thankful of everything I've been through this year and 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 over the years and stuff. And it's been, this show has been kind of a rock for me. Um, of stability and it's been giving me a focus and it helps me keep a routine even though, and even though I fell off that routine a little bit this year uh, I, I'm glad I found my way back and it was the, through the help of all of you um, for supporting this show and, and reminding me that I do need an outlet where I talk about stuff I love and don't focus on you know the stuff that I go through in my life it's good to have a place to escape to and with other people that I, I respect and and talked with you know on a weekly basis it's good to have this so Thanks for bringing me back. And, uh, and we will have a lot more content coming up next season with Dark Web and then Venom 3 movie news for sure. So thank you so much. See you in the next episode. Peace.